has its no base. But less than seven, it's an asset, we say. More than seven, it's a base all the way. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about an experiment you've done in class when it comes to looking at color changes of different indicators. What we're going to do in this video is cover the next dot point, which says solve problems by applying information about the color changes of indicators to classify some household substances as acids, neutral or basic. Let's take neutral or basic. So in this case, we're actually going to cover some questions because that's what the dot point is all about. So solve problems is our verb. We have to solve problems. And we have to apply information about color changes. We get tables of that, of indicators to classify substances, household substances as acidic, neutral, or basic. In this video, we're actually going to cover this question. And it's not a question to do with household substances, but it's a very similar to one to what kind of questions you would have to face in your HSC. And this question actually comes from the Success One Excel series. So just to give credit where credit is due. When it comes to this question, it says plant growth is affected by soils that are too acidic or too basic. Table 1 shows the pH range of a number of indicators. Table 2, this one here, shows soil pH value below which growth of listed plants is restricted. So the actual question is explain how indicators could be used to check whether the pH of, soil, of the soil in a particular area is suited for the growth of wheat. In your answer, you should identify which indicators or indicators could be used and justify your response. So this kind of question is a quite common question you might be facing and it tests your skills if you know what indicators are and how you could use them to actually assess things in terms of you know can things grow there or is it a acidic neutral or basic substance. So in this case we're actually being asked so the question is explain how indicators could be used so explain as a verb how indicators could be used to check whether the pH of the soil in a particular area is suited for growing wheat. Okay, we have to check and we have to explain if we can, how we can check if wheat could be grown. And wheat has an ideal pH right here of 5.5. So that's its ideal pH range. It wants to have a pH of about 5.5. And in your answer, you should identify which indicators could be used and then justify your response. So first, give a general statement of you know, why could we use indicators to check if the optimum pH is there, and then say which one of these will be used in that example, and then we have to justify it. So we have to say why we would use it as well. In this case, uh, so we want to make sure we have a pH of around about 5.5. How could we use indicators to check that? Well, we know that these indicators have colors when they go have a too low pH they change a certain color and if they have a too high pH they change a different color everything in between are different shades of those colors and then we, for this table we've given the different indicators on this t t side we've got the color changes the ranges <clears throat> and we have the approximate pH range of what the range is where they're quite specific what that means I'll show you an example is this here we have Bromo, this is bromothymol blue, which is this indicator right there. And as you can see, when it says low pH, it has a color yellow, and high pH, it has a color blue. And its approximate pH range is 6 to 7.6. .6. So what that means is if it has a low, lower pH than 6, so lower than 6, lower than 6, it's going to be yellow. And if it's above it, so here, 7.6 or above, it's going to be blue. So higher than 7.6, it's going to be blue. And everything in between, we have these different, so between 6.0 and 7.6, we have these different shades. So light green, gray, green, darker green, and then light blue. These are all the shades in between. So we can use bromothymol blue, for example, to figure out if something has either a, something that's an acid or a neutral or basic substance. We can't really use it to, to distinguish between neutral and basic substances because both neutral and basic substances will turn blue. But we can distinguish it between an acid, which will be red, or a base, which will be a base and a neutral substance, which will be blue. But we have that fine area in the middle. So that fine area allows us to really to see what kind, roughly what kind of pH it has. So that was the example of bromothymol blue.
but we're actually going to cover the example here. So we want to find out what kind of range wheat has. So if we test the soil, what we would do is we check for these indicators which fall in that area, that approximate range. And one thing that stands out is that 5.5 .5 is a number, but this here now has a number 5.4. And that's quite useful because if the actual indicator turns blue, it means that we know it has a higher pH than 5.4. So we will actually be using Bromo Skrill Green. That's one of the indicators we'll be using. It's not the only one. We can't use that by itself. It won't be enough. But using this one will tell us, so this one tells us that the pH is higher than 5.4 if it turns blue. So if it turns blue, we know that pH is higher than 5.4, which is good because if it's too low, lower than 5.4, then it means that's, that's too low for wheat. So that's one we use. And then what we can do is we can use either lethal red or bromothymal blue. So one of these two is going to be our second indicator. So for example, if we use methyl red, it will be, so if it's below 4.4, it will turn pink. If it's above 6.2, it will turn yellow. And everything in between has these different shades of these two colors. So we know that it has, if we, for example, use this one first, and it says it's blue, we know it has a pH of more than 5.5. If we then use methyl red, and it's not yellow or pink, so it's something in between, so for methyl red, it's somewhere in between. That means it's going to have a pH of somewhere of 4.4, between 4.4 and 6.2, based on the fact that it did not turn pink or yellow. It turned a different shade. So it has to be in between that range. Now we know it because we first used the first one, bromo Bromo green. We figured out that it definitely has a pH of above 5.5. And if you use that second one and it falls in that range as well, that means it's going to be above 5.5 because that's what we figured out first. And somewhere between 5.5 and the other part of that range, which is 6.2. So using those two indicators, we figured out that the pH range of that soil is somewhere between this area. We can't get it exactly to the pH, but it's going to be somewhere in that area. So for wheat, we need to have a pH of 5.5. And we know it's going to be somewhere in that area. We don't know exactly if it's going to be 5.5, but we know it's going to be somewhere in that area. So justify your answer. The reason why we used both of these is to figure out, first of all, we used the first one, Bromo Crystal Green, to figure out that it's not going to be too low. And then we used the other one, Bromo Thermal Blue, to make sure that it's roughly in that area. So between 5.5 and 6.2. And using both these indicators allowed us to do this. So this kind of question is a question which you might be getting in your exam. It could be due with classifying things as acid, neutral, or basic, or it could be working with these kind of questions, which are quite related. But you should be expecting to get uh, tables like these, and then a question similar to this one. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching. Chemistry is a science of discovery and questions. Why do the different elements and compounds react? Why do they react differently from each other? If I want to make a particular compound, how do I go about making that compound? Am I going to have to heat the reactants to get that compound to form? How much compound am I going to make if I start out with different amounts of reactants? How long am I going to have to wait for that compound to form? Chemistry is very important in all the aspects of our lives. Our whole body is run by very involved chemistry. The environment around us runs by chemistry. Most of the substances that we make are produced by chemical reactions. And it's important for us to know how those reactions occur in order to make many of the decisions about our world. What I'd like to do is start out with having us observe a chemical reaction, a reaction between copper metal and nitric acid. In the first flask, we put in 20 milliliters of concentrated nitric acid. In the second flask, we put in 500 milliliters of water to which we've added a little bit of phenothaline. Phenothaline is an acid-base indicator 
that is colorless in the acid solution and pink in basic solution. In the third flask, we've put about 400 milliliters of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide, which is a base. I'm going to add copper metal wire to the first flask. In the first flask, we've generated a lot of brown NO2 gas. When the copper is used up, the reaction will stop. The solutions will start to flow in the reverse direction. This is referred to as the red, white, and blue reaction from the colors of the flask. There's a lot of chemistry that's happened in the reaction that you've seen. And by the end of the course, you'll be able to explain the reactions that have occurred in each one of the flasks. You'll have an exciting time during this course, and we hope that you enjoy it. It's now time to start that adventure.